Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of No Quest for the Wicked Gentleman. I've got two questions for you. First and foremost, are you ready to rock? I am. Yeah. I'm nervous. Uh, every, 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 working it's on so it. It's so important now. Uh, more importantly, are you ready to roll? Yeah. I don't know. My dice. So, yeah. yeah. My <laughs> dice have been... <laughs> We're struggling with energy today. My dice have been <laughs> bullying me, I think, the last while. So, am I ready to roll? I am. Are they? I don't think Wasn't so. Wasn't there a shit ton of... Wasn't there like a shit ton of ones last one? Yeah, there last was. Like me, so many. Me and you got between those three to four ones in a row. It was very upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's keep doing that. That's good storytelling. <laughs> no. I love it. Yeah, we just immediately die. <laughs> good show. Quick. Thank you. Guys, how have we made it this many episodes? <laughs> I actually have no idea. You guys are on XTM 12, the living planet, where you have tracked down Mazo's secret base in an effort to find both Azin, Mazo, and Penateris to stop the reckoning. You theoretically have done that. Uh, you were able to reconcile the pieces, the, the shattered psyche of Penateris and merge them together in a psychic subspace with Azin and Cody, the two pieces of. Uh, individual psyches that were fractured during the transference as and cody were able to reconcile those while durin and merrick fought to protect them from the ever increasing and ever possessed hayden wire you guys were successful and now you are posed with a different problem and a new threat or i guess a, a, an old familiar threat at this point in time uh riddle has overrided one of the experimental Archon prototypes that Mazo was working on and has just smashed through the platform that is also lifted up and floating in the air of the, the Project Transference. And Riddle is about to obliterate you in a giant mech. Uh, Riddle has, like, in my head, every time I've seen Riddle, he's been in re reboot animation. <laughs> like the rest of the world has been completely like, normal, but he's been from reboot, the, the, like the '90s reboot. Yeah, the, the, show. Yeah, like the, the, I believe it. Yeah, <laughs> reboot. So like his face is the big, you know, the crazy eyebrows they used to have. Like that's just what I picture. Oh yes, I know How who you're weird. talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Um, okay. Well, <clears throat> no. So I'll describe this archon a little bit for you. Um, right now, you are in project. Looks like it's from reboot. Yeah. Cowboy hat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cowboy hat, yeah. Cowboy hat. <laughs> Big elephant. <laughs> you see the edges of the, the room are sparking from where it's been ripped out of the facility and shot straight up. The storm of Exium 12, this this raging red electrical storm, is uh, just above you. you. You are just under the cloud line of this storm. And you see in the corner the chairs that you used to enter into the psychic subspace, uh, the old containment for Alpha, the bank of terminals that was in the middle of the room, absolutely gone as uh, Riddle smashed through them. And then there's also now a hole in the roof as well, where Riddle is perched, aiming their, their weapons arrays on their shoulders down into the room at you. And at the far room is the remains of Penateris. What would you like to do? Oh, that's a lot to throw at us. Um, R Riddle, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I've been going through a lot, and I know we tried to <laughs> scoop you, and and it, Dern wasn't even doing it of his own accord. It was all me, and I'm sorry. And I really hoped we could put this past us. We just we just took a demon out of him, so like he we're on a different level now. Everything's good. We're practically new people at this uh, point, you know. So I, I'm pretty sure Riddle's like mostly X, the Exium or, or the Prestige or whatever his their name has changed like three times since we've entered this base. So, <laughs> but I believe Riddle's got a lot of that going on. So I don't think it's just because we bullied a little robot, guys. 
you know that's you know the answer <laughs> the archon is this large sleek metal construct it has a large breastplate that sort of like flares out into big pauldrons in those pauldrons you can see multiple slots that would open and house uh, a numerous array of weapons. Their arms and hands are these big, uh, rounded, almost like cylinders that, once again, you can see has articulation that would rotate to reveal a new weapon on each side, depending on where what it's like positioning is. It is unpainted and unfinished, so you could tell that if this went to manufacture, it would look pretty fucking cool. But right now you can tell that this is sort of like a, a one and done prototype that never got finished. So there are still some elements of construction. All of it is just sort of like this this polished metal that uh, that doesn't really have any luster or, you know, it's just, it just kind of like steel. But you can tell that there is a small little bit of like spray paint on its right leg that seems to be like a color palette testing. And there's like sort of like a white strip with uh, black and gold, which is sort of the Therum official colors that most of the Archons have. Um, there's like a red, black, and gold. There's a, a blue. And you could just tell that like that was someone sort of like workshopping colors, but it has its its legs and feet uh, aren't sort of like a traditional boot look like. They're almost like talons. So these like three articulated uh, hooks that are currently like dug into the side of this hole that they smashed through. And Riddle looks down at you and says, did you just call my friend Penateris? A demon? <laughs> I look, no! I look at Dura uh, and I'm like... <laughs> all right, from now on, whenever speaking the riddle, you guys shut the fuck up. How's that go? Oh, you yeah, guys I, I agree with that plan. Just stumble. Absolutely. You, you, you try, uh, Merrick. Give, give him a speech. Yeah. You, get, you give it a go. <laughs> riddle. Extium. We've, we've done what we've came here to do. What is another act of violence? Cody winces. You're a, a planet, Extium. The original plan, your original plan, unfortunately, will not go as planned. But what we can do is promise you reconciliation. We can talk to the Federation, send people down here to talk with you directly, get you inducted as your own member, with your own voice, as you are, well, this is obvious, a very big part of this system. You're literally. literally a planet. So put down the gun. Let us be your voice, as you have tried to be the voice for those in a worse and lesser position, let us be the voice for you and get you what you need to be fertile, to be a beautiful place, to be what you want to be. I whisper to Durham, that was actually pretty good. I'm just shutting the fuck up. That's all I'm doing. You see for a second, they, they seem almost disarmed. There's a there's like a sigh of relief almost. And then the happy face that is sort of projected onto the front of the Archon's helmet turns angry. And all right, it says, I'm not just a planet. In fact, oh I'm God. not a planet. I'm a people. And it was the people like the Federation. It's the, the people that you're trying to save. They're the ones who did this to me. I don't want to be a part of that. I want to be the solution. And its front chest plate drops down and a cannon slowly appears. And then you hear... <laughs> And a large uh, beam of energy begins growing in the barrel of this gun. And then it unleashes a particle beam down on the three of you. Oh, great. That's cool. But Duren, you notice something huh? that you've seen once before. The huh? hanging Eris reactor shudders for a second. A glowing, brilliant light shoots down through the column of it and then explodes in a blinding flash of light. And just as the beam is about to hit you, there's silence. It feels like someone has sucked all noise out of the world. You don't hear the raging electrical storm above you. You don't hear the whipping winds. And you certainly don't hear the inevitable explosion of being hit with a Starship-class weapon at close range. And when the light subsides, you see that there is a bubble surrounding you, with Aerodaxis standing in the middle of it, his hand reaching up, blocking the particle beam. Great timing. Finally, some good timing. I told you, when you needed me, I would be here. Thank, thank you. I, we took care of Penny, by the way. 
When you say that, he says, is she here? I, uh, her body's over there. I don't know where Don't look she too is. close. Yeah. He stares at the area that you point, Cody, and immediately the bubble bursts. Hmm. Ah, uh, and we all die. Well, we we all need some notes on our timing, all of us, including including you. And, Guys, uh, I can't be the one to do all the talking. Okay, not you, Cody. The first time Air Cody access. said something awkward in this entire season at the wrong time, and I get jumped on. No, no, no. I mean more Aerodaxis here, not not you. Aerodaxis, with a flick of his wrist, he he swats Riddle away as if it was nothing more than a fly, and you see the Archon just go f- launching up and into the sky through the electrical storm and just like gone. Aerodaxis slowly walks over to the deconstructed body of Penateris and he places a hand on the glass and just stands there for a second and in a language you've never heard before whispers something. I'm, I'm really sorry that it had to go this way. We put the parts of her mind back together. I don't know where that leaves her. He turns with his hand still on the glass and faces you. And then he looks down at the hole in the ground, walks over to it, and takes a step off it and plummets to the ground below. Um, um, can do, do Valai take fall damage? Can we just go home? Is there anything left for us to do? Have we saved the galaxy or not saved the galaxy? Do we have a checklist of things we promised to do? Does anyone been keeping track? <laughs> <laughs> the checklist kept getting rewritten uh, and it's, it's lost the time. I pull out something. I'm like, I think this. Oh, no, it's just the thing that says party question mark. And uh, when we got to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I should I, I go we, after him? I don't I do. Is, can, can is you? there a problem anymore? I don't yeah, know. I, can, um, I have jump jets. Do our radios work now? Uh, are you trying them? Yeah. Um, as soon as you click it on, you hear they're static. You hear like, but then you hear, is anybody there? Hello, come in, come in. Um, This, this is Cody. Uh, and you can hear Jenny's voice sort of like yelling over the, the radio. Uh, we're, we're in the big floating rock with the hole in it. Why is this still floating? What's keeping this up? What? I don't ask. I'm worried it'll yeah, stop. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Our timing's been really bad in all these things. I bet you it's really beautiful from up here. You know, in a weird, weird way. This this planet that's like just like cliffs, and I just picture red lightning. And I mean, yeah, yeah there's probably a there's probably a natural beauty to it all, especially mm-hmm. with like how everything is just kind of shifting and changing. Like the land itself looks almost like a sea. Is there? Are there deserts for Merrick to, to gaze upon? Oh, uh, there's kind of everything. Like nothing nice. stays the same. So like at one moment it's like there's a there's like a savanna and then all of a sudden it'll like just everything will almost like someone like popped it, like someone touched it and just like turns to sand, or there'll be like a rush of water just comes mm. out of nowhere. If I see an area of, of like desert, I like tap Merrick on the shoulder while I'm on the phone, I point at it real happy. You guys are looking down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, cool. As you guys are looking down, you see uh, Aerodaxis falling, and the earth opens up into a hole, and he goes into it, and then it closes. Do we make another another boss monster? I, Do we make another hope, bad guy? I, I, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> There's no right answer anymore. Maybe maybe Penny's psyche's down there, and he's just going to go get it. We should have just erased the corpse so there was no evidence. <sighs> <laughs> Be fair, like we don't see the lie corpses too often, right? It's they're usually gone into the wind. Right, so well, there's one right there. Fire. I point at the engine. You're right. Well, oh, that's oh, that's mm, too soon. Uh, you hear the <laughs> approaching engine this time, one that is familiar, as through a a haze of of cloud cover, the persistence appears and approaches and comes to a slow halt. And it turns around and opens the sort of like force field door. And Jenny and Kathan are waiting for you and like holding out their hands or as close to the the edge of this floating platform as possible. And they're just like, um, guys, we should probably go. So uh, come on. This is <laughs> this is good as in, by the way. So he's allowed on. And I, I jump over. I prefer ju- I prefer neutral. I don't know if we can trust him yet or not. Jumping over. Honestly, I forgot he was here for a second. 
I was drinking when you said that, damn it. <laughs> Come on, Asin. Like, this time you don't need to sneak in. Uh, and Asin jumps over with you. Are you still able to goop through the window in if you wanted to? Um, Asin looks down at his hand, and he does still form a, like, silver blade and then, like, reforms it a little bit. It's not quite as graceful, but he does seem to have the uh, the ability to to transmute silver with his body. Yeah. How do you feel from one to punch a tank? So, so cool. Question. Um, he thinks for a second. He just says, I could probably punch a tank. Okay, good. All right. This might not be over. It's never simple as and if you, well, as you would know, because you were once somebody who made things difficult. Yeah. The most difficult, <laughs> some might say. As the, the crew, like all of you are sort of like standing there together. Uh, Short Jack's not there. You can assume that he is probably flying. And as in looks across the room at everyone and just says, I do want to apologize for the trouble that I'm sure I caused you, but I would have brought you in on this if I could have. However, because of the the psychic hold that Panateris had on me, I wasn't able to to speak what I wanted to do. She was preventing me to. So I had to be cryptic. I had to give vague hints. I had to, to guide you the, the only way I could. It would have been a lot easier if I could have just told you what was happening, but I quite literally and physically could not. And I needed to keep it a bit of a secret. If she caught on to what I was trying to do, if the Federation, who was, you know, under their influence as well, it it would have been more difficult to achieve reconciliation. So, uh, I do apologize, but please know that there was a reason for it. He's a he's also a big fan of Mission to Malibu and and he loves Merrick. So I think we can all forgive him, right? Feel free to take your time. Uh Jenny kind of looks at him and gives him sort of like a once over and just says, "All these guys do is talk about how you punched a tank." And I think that would be helpful right about now. So, you're okay on my side for now. As she points up and you see crashing through back through the electrical storm, Riddle's Archon form, and it smashes into the roof that remains of that building. It explodes, it crashes down, lands right in front of that hole in the ground, and braces itself, almost beast-like on all fours, and a cannon appears on its back, like this huge chain cannon, and just begins shooting. You feel a lurch in the ship all of a sudden as uh, Short Jack guns it. You guys kind of like barely keep your balance and it's just going. A battle positions. Uh, as in, what can you do on a ship? We need a science officer, right? He's he's technically like the medical officer would be his his role. Uh, it's a doctor. I don't I don't understand the difference. <laughs> if only we had a medical bay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys do have a med bay now. We do now, yeah. Did we get a med bay? Yeah, we, we did. did. I don't remember yeah. us For doing this that. moment, <laughs> as in get to the goddamn medical bay. There might be cobwebs in there because I don't think we've used it since we got it. We haven't even checked to see if anything works, honestly. It's just kind of If we got there. the medical bay back then, as in would have instantly come over to our crew and everything would have been plain sailing. <laughs> we would have saved the world in yeah, like we 20 been episodes. Done on Kaya. <laughs> I told you guys had the right <laughs> facilities, the right people would join your crew and you... I know. Didn't have a med bay. Great. You guys all rush into the cockpit and you see Short Jack is just like, <laughs> he's just like, ah, gotta get full <laughs> speed. Um, You're doing great, buddy. Oh my God. Get in here, Cody, please. Uh, and okay. he sort of like hops backwards. He does like a backflip out of the chair. I almost sit on his lap. I'm coming in so hot and heavy. <laughs> Jenny runs, jumps up onto sort of like the, the ladder and just like one fluid motion, like pull ups into the turret. Merrick, I'm assuming you're grabbing the captain's chair. Yeah, of course. Duran, the engineering table lights up. Of course. As you uh, get to it. And Kathleen just sort of like takes position elsewhere. He's, he's kind of like the, the everyman uh, doing what he can. And Short Jack takes his position beside you during a science officer. Hell yeah. Give him a give him a little high five or a fist bump. and Let's get mm. going. Kathan turns to you and says, Nacy, I would probably recommend just getting the fuck off this planet. But in case you haven't noticed, uh, he pulls up like a small little screen on the side of the uh, windshield. And he says, this electrical storm would tear us apart if we tried to break atmosphere right now. I don't know Cody how. immediately, Cody's gunning towards it and just goes, <laughs> turns away. 
He says, I don't know how just, we're going to manage it, but we need to quell this storm or do something that will let us get out of here. Because right now, the only option is certain death, I guess. I mean, we, we could hit drift mid, mid-planet, mid though. I'm sure that has absolutely horrible consequences. Catherine says, look, that's an option. But unfortunately, in order to activate drift, as you know, we need to be still. We need to kill our engines to spool up the, the drift drive. And if we do that, something tells me that thing isn't going to let us. Don't worry, Duran's done that before, and no one got murdered, just the ship. No one died. No one. Oh, everyone survived. 100% survival Apart rate. Apart from yep. the ship. That, that, that engine survived. Still survived. We're good. Uh, you see a sort of, like, barrage of rockets fly by and explode in front of you. The The electrical storm is sort of, like, crackling down at you. Cody, give me a piloting check. That is, ooh, that's a 36. Nice. You are able to sort of deftly maneuver around as these lightning bolts are just like, they look more intentional than a natural lightning bolt is. These these bolts are actively trying to hit you. And you realize that the closer you are up, the more dangerous it's going to be because of these these bolts that are, are just kind of like, coming right for the ship almost like you guys are a lightning rod and uh you can see sort of like the trajectory as you're looking forward you can see the next bolt appearing in front of you getting ready to strike down um guys the sky is trying to bully us i take it a little lower i'm gonna fly like midpoint between the ground and the sky because i'm sure the ground will also be trying to bully us i see (laughs) that smile dan Mm. great it is engineering's turn as you guys are now in starship combat with Riddle. Oh, shit. Cody, I'm going to give you all I can give you, and I'm going to divert power to the engines. My engineering's 25. I have to hit a 26. I rolled a five on the die. We're good. We did it. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Give you some more maneuverability out there. Oh, yeah, we need it. So that increases the positioning DC by two. Two. Let me know when you want to jump in, Merrick. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to, um, I'm reading what Captain can do, because he's, he, we said he's chief mate, right? Yeah. I am going to. I guess stunt to avoid. Right, I'm gonna take Cody. The... We need to get our grounding. I believe in you. Thanks, Merrick. I'm gonna I'm gonna evade and and then shoot him in his face. Great plan. It's worked for us so far. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the bonus, and I'm successful. <laughs> yeah, I I beat the evade DC. So we have a plus two to AC and TL. As I no longer am I like wildly just spinning the ship. I feel like I've got a handle on the lightning, so I'm just like very specifically, like very accurately, like weaving in and out. And I'm going to flip the ship backwards and aim towards uh, towards Riddle. Uh, well, we'll see if you do that with your positioning check. Nat fucking 20. Let's go. Nice. Hell yeah, man. Nice. I think what we've been doing is giving you an, a plus two to your attack roll with a cool. with a nat 20. They got a 33. And that's to beat my one, right? Your positioning, yeah. You're good. Okay. Um, you see, as you are zooming, you see that Riddle has like almost in like a like a runner start. They were down on all fours and have just grabbed the edge of that hole and launched themselves forward. And it's now sort of like corkscrewing towards you. And they hold out both arms. You see the vents on the, the cuffs of the arms drop down and a like sort of small ring of rockets pop out and they launch them at you. Cool. As I flip the ship backwards and I'm like trying to weave in and out of them and I just like open up fire on the Gatling and I yell up to Jenny. I'm like, open fire. I'm also using the plus two from the ship because we haven't used it yet. Oh, I guess we still have to make attack rolls, don't we? We do. Yeah, he just takes damage. I got a 31. Ooh, you got him. Oh, and I rolled the exact same thing. So it's a 33 against your K or your AC. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yes, that'll definitely get us. Uh, they do 14 points of damage to your forward arc. 14 as I do 34 points of damage. Uh, as you begin, what are you shooting with? What is your main weapon? It's the uh, the Gatling. Nice. Um, as you pepper it with bullets, you see that the Archon doesn't have a shield. Um, oh, the okay, bullets good. actually are uh, like penetrating it directly, but you see that like some of the bullets are actually just denting and not piercing. Uh, and it seems to have like some sort of threshold that you need to bypass in order to 
uh, actually deal damage to it. God damn it, they have Gundanium. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the science officer didn't get to go this time. We have a science officer. Oh, yeah. Short yeah, check. Short check. Yeah, what would you like short check to do? I want to do some scanning, see what we can figure out about Catherine, this thing. Catherine, do the thing where you help the scan. It's something he can do. Yeah. Also, they may as well take the plus two. Uh, I mean, he two of them. doesn't need it. He rolled a 19. So short check opens up sort of like a, a scan and you see where that image of like the storm was now gets replaced with this scan of the Archon and it like begins looking around and short Jack begins going through the data. And during you actually recognize this as the Archon that you saw very briefly when you were hacking through the terminal, setting up the, the fail safe for the, the Cody room. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you, you notice some of the things that like that you do need to know. Some of the things to note is uh, it does have a damage threshold. So it essentially works like like DR, that mm -hmm. a, a certain amount of damage gets negated every round. But if you hit a certain level of damage, it it doesn't. So essentially, it's a DR, but. So if you do a certain amount of damage in a round, that damage threshold gets pierced for that round and all the damage goes through. On that note, did Jenny fire? Uh, she hasn't rolled. Well, she rolled her attack roll, and she, but I haven't rolled damage yet. Um, okay. Because of Catherine, we get one extra piece of information. Cool. Oh, yeah. It seems like they operate on a almost like a Solarian charge ability. So they have to do light attacks before they can unleash one of their larger attacks. So it seems like the heat generated from their standard attacks gets funneled into a core and then that core gets released. So after a certain amount of normal attacks, they're going to hit you with a very large attack. And it, it will it seems like it would probably be pretty obvious when that is about to happen. There'll be a charge up round. <laughs> Essentially, you'll you'll get like a one round. Now that you know that that's a thing, you will be able to be like, oh, it's it's going to be next round. We never got a magic officer, eh? Um, you can tell that it's also incredibly weak to magic officers. <laughs> as, as, we can just throw as <laughs> in that chair. It's better than no one. It's <laughs> Cody. We don't even know if those computers work or not. Cody <laughs> taps the sign and you see no med bays, but it's been crossed out and underneath it just says no magic. <laughs> I think that is the the most important information regarding this Archon. Uh, now it's Jenny's turn to roll dice. Uh, she does 30 points damage. Hell yeah. Does that beat the threshold, Dane? It does not. The Damn threshold's it. higher than 64? Sorry, it's per attack, not not per round. Sorry. You I think, specifically I think I'm said round. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's per attack. Okay. It's, it's like DR, essentially. Yeah, cool. We're learning together. It is... Now, if uh, I think everyone's gone, right? Everyone's done yep. their thing. Cool. You see in front of you uh, one of the mountain ranges in the distance rocketing towards you. It it is it is Jesus moving. <laughs> oh my god! Like a tidal wave, the the mountain range is encroaching. It begins almost like waving like a snake to move it, it drops down into a valley and then shoots up as a, a mountain range and drops down as a valley and shoots up as a mountain range Cody, you're gonna have to give me a piloting check please oh god i've never seen a mountain worm oh <laughs> man <laughs> i told you the ground was gonna bully us this is a new one that is going to be 29 you pull up just slam it to the mountain. Yeah, <laughs> you pull up as it's coming. It, it's on another like upwards uh, trajectory and you try to get out of range, but you hear the bottom of the ship scrape across the rocky outcropping. And you can tell that it seems to have like formed an even sharper point at point of contact. You take 11 points. Uh, no, sorry. 13 points of damage to your uh, rear uh, shields. Sorry, guys, I was too busy focusing on the lightning. Um, and as you look behind you, you can see that the mountain itself, a hand is formed out of the rock and it takes like a swipe at you and it just kind of like taps the back of the ship and it kind of wobbles and you can tell it was like trying to grab you. It, it It's like the movie The Mummy. <laughs> uh, it is which one? top of the round. The third one. Damn, yeah, the first the, the first one, the only one that really counts. I tap the third sign that says we love Brandon Fraser. Let's uh let's crank up the power to the uh the weapon system. Crushed it, so we're throwing all we can, just hitting the you know, we're keeping it casual right now. Nothing's too crazy yet. I mean the mountain did come at us, that's a little <laughs> crazy, but nothing's too hectic yet. We don't have to tear the the system out. We're just bumping up the power to the to the attacks, to the weapons. Like, all right, give it all you got. I'll, I'll do my best. Um, seeing that short check jumps on his terminal and you see him like tapping away and that little image of the 
Archon gets like a reticle beside it, and he's going to attempt to use a lock on ability. Oh, oh beautiful. And he succeeds. Um, you see the little reticle like, bloop, 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 brrr, and then it goes lock on. Um, so you're going to get a plus two to attack rolls for this round. Nice. Short check just says, hit him hard and fast. That's the plan. Yeah, and any ones are considered twos instead. Hell yeah. Okay, we're moving into the pilot phase. Positioning checks. If you don't want to stunt. Do you want me to demand you now or should I demand the guns? I'll demand I- you now. <laughs> Cody, <laughs> why am I asking for your goddamn permission? Damn. Well, Cody. <laughs> oh my God. You have come so far. Thank you're you. are what this ship is needed. This ship is you. It moves the way you want it to move. Always. So don't flinch. Don't deviate from what we need. Stay on the path. Strike hard. Strike true. And let's kill a planet again, I guess? But this time it's a good thing. Uh, yes. Aye, aye, Captain. And I... Plus four this time, now. Okay, nice. That is a 38 positioning. You're not doing a stunt? You're just going right for positioning? Oh, I forgot the stunt. Do you want that roll for the... Can I also roll the stunt now, but backwards? I just got too caught up in the speech. Yeah, roll roll your your stunt now. Uh, I'm going to do evade. That is a... I think that might be a failure. No, it is on the money. Jesus. Yeah, 29. So okay. I'm evading. Uh, well, it got a nat 20 on its positioning roll. You see uh, the thrusters in its heels like kick into overdrive, and it speeds up right beside you. And as it does, it holds out its hand and makes this huge particle beam sword and is going to try to drag it along the, the side of the ship. It is yeah, a Gundam. Dude, I don't <laughs> believe you've never seen a Gundam show. Like, you keep on yeah. telling us that and everything that we do. For I years, even, and I this, don't believe you. I don't even know what a goon dam is. So it's the science officer's turn, but the interference from the Ahab reactor. Dane. Okay, now we do attack rolls. Let's go. I'm taking my plus two. That is a 29. That is it on the money. Unfortunately, I just rolled another nat 20. Oh, damn. So Can it is not? going to crit on this sword attack. Uh, 25 points of damage to your, I can never remember the sides, port shield. Port, 25 you said? Correct. As you see this blade like almost pierce through the shield and just like scrape across it, the shield almost like parts for a second before managing to, to snap shut. Cody pulls a risky maneuver while this is happening and just turns with the strike, kind of sacrificing the flank a little bit, but basically blank range firing the uh, the Gatling into him for 41 points of damage with uh, Durin's bonus. Hell yeah. Beating the damage it's fucking threshold. Better. Right? You did 41 points of damage, right? Yeah. You see every one of those bullets begin shredding through the, the sort of like breastplate on its front there. Uh, and you can tell that you certainly beat the damage threshold. Hell yeah. Uh, Jenny just rolled in that one. <laughs> oh no. Jenny. She probably didn't expect me to do. Wait, uh, can Jenny use her own abilities to reroll no, that? No, she cannot. Jelly, Jenny, play yourself a song. <laughs> Jenny, you, yeah, you, you like wing the the ship in a way that she was not expecting. She had a perfect line on it, and just like last minute, she gets jerked to the side, and you see the bullets, like these big chunky like plasma bullets, get launched. They go wide, and you can see that like there's a scoop of electricity, like redirecting them back towards the ship. Oh no! And that is going to, they're going to get an attack roll on you. Because if you haven't noticed, there are two combatants in this combat. It is the Archon and the planet. Uh, That is a 39 to hit. Yep. Yeah. You're going to take half of a Jenny damage. Is half just because it's being reflected back? Yeah. Okay. Um, So you're going to take 14 points of damage to uh, the forward arc. <laughs> um, guys, we're we're very low on shields. Yep, yep, I'm on it. It is the engineer's phase. All right, we're going. I'm just gonna go like tired of the uh, the smoothness of the screen. I'm just gonna flip it up and start unplugging things and plugging them back in like the like the way it should be done. All right, um, and I'm gonna use uh our uh sorry a resolve point to overpower. Ooh. Terry, before you reveal the number on that dice yes dane i have a a a proposition for you okay oh i have that one use televet ability that you gave me right yeah 
It's only a plus five, so it's nothing crazy. Can I combine that with give a speech to give everyone, the crew, the speech bonus and the plus five for this round? Sure, but you know the rule. I need a speech worthy of a god. All right. Oh, um, in this moment, because I think Merrick wants to do this now, because I feel like if he saves it till we're in crisis, we won't get the full effect of it. So Merrick slams his chest to sort of get attention of the of the crew. Obviously, you're doing your job, so I don't expect full attention. Cody's fully turned around. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> this very well could be our last fight together as a family. We started off as three individuals lost in space, and we traveled this system that we barely knew, and we learned about its people, its planets. We met each and every one of you in your own situations. We helped you, but every step of the way, you helped us. Shortjack, you were the one who set us on the path here with the persistence. You stood up to bravely fight for your people then, on your home world, and even now. I'm proud, I'm so proud of the person, the individual you're becoming. Jenny, you were lost, thought that your prime was over, but you showed us the way, gave us guidance, inspired us with your talents, and followed us here to give us joy, pleasure, and sometimes to challenge us when we needed to be challenged. Catherine, you've lost home worlds, two of them in a way. But we got one back, and now we're going to claim the system back. Your bravery has inspired us. Zelfus, you are the strangest thing I've ever met in my whole life. Thank you. (laughs) But I swear to God, at the end of this, we're getting that fucking party. Azen, I love you. I'm glad that you're here with us at the end. Durin... This whole time, I feel like we've been like an old married couple. We could come to each other with our complaints, our issues, our worries, confined in each other, and find solace in that. And for that, you'll always be my brother. Anytime, honey. Cody. Yes, Dad? My son. (laughs) Who knew that the day we found you would set in motion the craziest little trail of dominoes the galaxy will ever know? But I would not change it for a moment. I would take nothing back. Yes, did we make mistakes along the way? Yeah. But we grew, we became more powerful, and we found our purpose. Together, we're going to save the galaxy. We're, we're, we're like halfway there. Maybe 75%. But I swear to God, I wouldn't do with anyone different. So use your talent. Use the strengths that we refined around the, around the way. You've all become sharp, precise tools. Now put it out there. Let's destroy a cocky robot. Make a planet chill out and then take a little break. It's been a crazy couple of months. Yeah. I love you very much. <laughs> I love you too. Love you too, Captain. To battle stations. When you finish your speech, Azen stands up, dusts himself off, and leaves the cockpit. I thought you were oh. like, that motion you did, I thought he was ripping his clothes off. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> Now's not the time. All right. And the, the roles of success. So what happens, you guys all get a plus five. That cost me an RP. You guys can roll twice and take the better result. Mm, okay. Do I still get the plus five? Yeah, or do dude. I take the roll Thanks, twice? so I can mix okay. it all together, baby. Boop, boop. Oh, all right. Then I'll do my uh, my other roll. Hey, the speech was worth it. If you gave me a shit speech, I wouldn't let you do it, but that was great. Have I ever yeah. given you a shit speech, Dane? Come on. No. Mediocre, maybe. There's a reason You've I gave. never disappointed. Um, good thing you did that, because it would have been a fail otherwise. So with your inspiration, you know, I plug the things right, they go in the right slots. That motivation really pushes me through, and I am diverting power to three systems, shields, engines, and starship weapons. Hell yeah. Damn. Um, I do believe I heal the shields with that by 5% of the PCU rating. Hell I yeah. I can distribute it however I please. So that's 60, right? Uh, 15. Yes. <laughs> Is it just 15? Yeah. Oh, that that's a shame. I'm just going to split it evenly between forward and port shields. Nice. Well, 15 doesn't split evenly. Uh, 0.5. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. I'm going to I'm going to put 8 8 on the forward and then 7 on the uh the port. Right, fine. <laughs> yeah. Break the system, whatever. Uh Shortjack uh succeeds on his roll to 
improve countermeasures. So the way that works is uh, this round, Riddle is going to be rolling twice and taking the worst roll for his attack. Nice. It is the pilot's turn. All right. Can I choose when to use the double roll or do I have to use it on the next roll? Uh, I think you can choose. I don't know. Do it now. Sure. Uh, and is the five just for the first rolls or for all rolls this round? We're making that up. So both round, both, both rolls until Dane I'm corrects say, me. Across, <laughs> across the board, yep. just roll twice and, and plus five. Sure. Uh, position? Or no, stunt. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going, I'm going balls to the wall here. I'm yeah. going to try to pull up bait and switch because I want the planet and Riddle to shoot at each other. Oh, okay. I was going to say there's no one really else, but yeah, exactly. you're right. I, but you, uh, you tipped your hat. You were like, there yeah. are two combatants. So yeah. I'm going to get really like pulled back to get near to Riddle and hopefully dip out of the way of the next planet attack. Oof. <laughs> Thank God. That went the other way. I rolled a nat one and I rolled a 17. So with the 17, that's going to bring me to a 45. I needed to hit 41. Hell yeah. Uh, all right. The planet will do half damage to Riddle. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's do some attack rolls. Uh, positioning? Positioning, yes. That's a 38. I also got a 38. Hell yeah. But yes, you you do it. Everyone gets into position. going to do an attack roll for Jenny. She gets to roll twice. Right. She hits. I'm going to turn those ones into twos. All right. Jenny does 25 points of damage. I assume a 42 is going to hit. <laughs> yes, it absolutely hits. Yeah. Now, remember, Jenny only does half damage because he's unshielded. Oh, OK. She does 12 points of damage. As you just hear like a doo, 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 as she just keeps peppering him. Uh, it doesn't see it just kind of like hits him off balance a little bit. He's just kind of taking the hits after the first one. He kind of just like fully goes through it. Yeah. As uh, as the captain does his speech, I go, hi, hi, captain. And I jam on the brakes and pull really far back until I'm like right in front of Riddle, uh, probably surprising him. And I'm waiting, biding my time, hoping the planet will launch an attack. And as it does, I like flip the ship, burst the Gatling right into his face and like spin away, uh, hoping to like distract him. I also do 47 points of damage with Durin's bonus. Hell yeah. Uh, which does break through the threshold. I think he might be glitching at this point. Yes. Math. You are able to to do all this seamlessly. You do startle Riddle because he rolls a nat one. As uh, you see him try to, as you're getting close, he's going to try to like, tries to grab your your back end. But instead, you get like way too fucking close. And because you are shaped like a moth, uh, you drive the back into his chest and almost send him sort of like spiraling back. And then Shortek says, uh, guys, did you remember to close the, the door? Because it's open right now. God damn it. I, what door? I think Dazen's going to punch a As tank. You, he's going to punch a planet. That, that would be way cooler. All right. Like, he's really up in the game if that's the case. The camera switches on to, to show, like, the tavern entrance. And you see Azen running full tilt out the door. He jumps and just fucking, like, cold cocks the Archon, like, across the face. And you see them, like, starting to, like, tumble and, and fight in air. <laughs> a tiny man and a big robot are tumbling in. Yeah. Just, we, we should have known something was up when he tore his clothes off and ran <laughs> off. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Now you have to deal with the planet. And no matter what, regardless of how this this works out, it, half of it is going to go to uh, Riddle. You reverse into it, so you smash the back end of the ship into him, sending him flying back. But then you see, as you are flying over underneath the ground turns into a sea, and you see it starting to rage. A whirlpool starts to fill, but it builds up into a hurricane, and it begins coming towards you, forms around you almost, and it begins buffeting you with shards of ice, and it's tough to like actually control. You can feel the persistence getting sucked into the gale force of these winds. You're going to have to give me a pilot check, please. Uh, not, not good. I got 27. Actually, is, am I still getting the five? Yeah. Uh, That's a 32. Okay. That succeeds. Oh yeah. Uh, So you are able to, how do you navigate out of this? I feel like I'm, I'm struggling. And then I see like the shining light of like Televet that like came, like burst forth, kind of like shows a way through. And I like angle the ship between and just like burst out through like a, a weak spot in the, in the hurricane. 
as Azen is, is beating the shit out of Riddle, it doesn't ri- realize it's flying right into a fucking hurricane. You see Azen sort of like push off and skirts the outside of the hurricane, but throws Riddle right into it. And you see Riddle getting like tossed around in the wind and getting hit with these huge chunks of ice. Uh, and he takes 29 points of damage. I guess even the planet isn't your friend, eh, Riddle? The second Riddle goes in there and takes a couple beatings, you see the like the hurricane just like drops. Just like a curtain of water just stops. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> uh, it is engineering's phase. Yeah, let's do it. Um, right now, I think we need some maneuverability, so I'm just going to divert engines. You know, just close it up. They've already fucked with the wires too much. Close it up and just start, you know, shifting little levers like I, like I should do. Uh, succeed. So I'm diverting all power to you, Cody. Thank you. Enjoy. I'll do what I can. Make it count. Oh, sorry. I had to do some quick math to see if Riddle is glitching. Oh, he's glitching twice. Oops. Let me do a quick D100 roll to see what systems of Riddle begin glitching. Um, And I will say, as the the hurricane and you see Riddle chasing after you again, uh, you can see the heat vents have opened. (laughs) Ow. Where's Azen? Is he just, is he flying? Yeah, Azen fly? Is Azen flying? It, you seem to it see him. What, is this like a Dragon Ball Z fight outside our ship right now that we're not seeing? Pretty much. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Dane, renowned not fan of anime, has Goku and fucking Gundam outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn that shit into the 10 minute rest for us to bully Dane into anime. Yeah, oh, guys, we're going to beat the shit out of Dane in this 10 minute rest. Uh, okay, so. His weapons array begin glitching. Let me see what. Oh, no, he can't do his powered up attack, I guess. I mean, he can still do it. It's just he'll have a minus two on his attack roll. Okay, so their forward arc is glitching. Life support. Which he wouldn't have. He's a robot. That would be off anyway, so don't worry. Well, the life support's for him, so now he just starts to die. Oh, that's true. Short Jack sees the glitch happen and says, let's focus on his weapons. If we take those out, then he can't really do shit. Um, and he's going to attempt a targeting, like a targeted strike. What's it called? Target system. And he succeeds. So you're going to crit on a 19 and a 20. And if you do successfully crit, it's going to force a glitch onto the weapons. Nice. Nice. Uh, I'm going to evade. Oh, that's a 19. God damn it. Wait, do I crit everything on the 19 or 20? No. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I, I start to evade. Okay. We will do some positioning checks. That is a 30. A 30 does not do it. He got a 33. Then it's exactly on the money. Damn. Okay. You see Riddle sort of like stop and like recalibrate for a second. There's like a a steam vent goes off for a little bit, drying him off. And as Azen goes in for another like flurry of attacks, he just sort of like backhands Azen and you see Azen go like flying off into the distance and like crashes into a mountain. And then as you are, what are you doing to get into position? What were you, what was your plan? I think I was just focusing so hard on evading when I saw the stuff start to build up that like maybe that just takes precedence. Yeah, you start getting into like strong evasive maneuvers and then you see a triangle shape sort of like unfold one side at a time and a a cannon once again emerge from his chest and you can see that that's going to be another particle beam attack. Before you reveal the result of that dice, Dane. Yep. I would like to activate my trap card. Oh, okay. nice. I would like to taunt him. <laughs> sure. I open comms, I guess. Okay. Hey, Riddle. Finally get yourself nice, big, and strong. What's it like being thrown around by a, a little guy with silver blades for hands? I don't like it. <laughs> big old riddle. Now a planet trying to do stuff. Screw you, riddle. Your jokes were never funny. You never told one riddle, by the way. Bit of a waste. <laughs> what looks like a bug and it's going to get squashed? You. Ha ha ha. Wrong. Suck it. I'm, I'm out of creativity. I used a lot of that earlier. You didn't hear it. I did pretty good. Now I'm just going to fail my check. So this is just banter. <laughs> Did you fail? Did you? Yeah, yeah, I failed. Riddle oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Riddle says, the correct answer is you. And a brilliant beam of energy shoots directly out. Uh, he got, he rolled 19 on the die. Well, yeah, but there's no way. Yeah. Well, my minus four probably would not have helped. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, you take 40 points of damage to the rear arc. Oof, oof. That's all of our shields, isn't That's it? That's all the shields in the back and 13 points of damage, and we were pretty close to that, that glitching. Mm. As this beam just, like, shoots out, and he kind of steadies, and even though you're sort of, like, taking evasive maneuvers, he's just, like, standing there with his chest and just keeps pointing at you. No matter where you go, it's just, like, a direct hit the entire time. And as you are evading, you see this forest spring up, and the trees shoot, like, straight up into the sky. (laughs) In a, like, comically large fashion. There's these, like, thick pine trees. Like, trunks of them are, like, miles long as they begin shooting up. Uh, you have to give me a piloting check. Please. So funny. Done. Such a funny visual. Do a good job. Bad one. Never mind. I didn't say what I was going to do. You went, used it all up on that last speech, man. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm just being, I'm being absolutely fucked by this part of the beam. I'm not looking at the fast trees, man. The trees begin shooting up and you are essentially f- trying to fly through a thick forest and it just doesn't fucking work. You are crashing into them. The wings are clipping off them and spinning you around. You are like just getting fucking ping ponged between them. You're splitting through most of them, but the damage is being done. You take 23 points of damage to your forward arc. Oh, okay. Which is also broken. I'll get us something, but it won't be a lot. And we are one point away from glitching. Shit. But we currently have uh, 69 HP. Nice. Uh, the trees finally just break. The forest just ends immediately. And you are flying towards a like straight, sheer cliff face. It is engineering space. Yeah. All right. We're going to, we're going to overpower again. Um, hate the hate the console. Just tear it up. It's it's useless. Just plugging shit in. I like that you just put down. it back together and you're like, nah, fuck it. Yeah, it, it, it's it's not my speed, and I succeed. So I'm going to divert power to uh, shields, engineering, and the weapons. So I guess 15 points. Split it between the front and back, Cody. I'll leave that to you. Whichever you want to okay. put the extra point in, since we don't want to do for actions here. <laughs> Short check is going to keep targeting the weapons mm-hmm. system. Uh, he says, if we can hit with another one of those particle beams, I don't feel good about it, so let's take that offline. Uh, he succeeds. Hell yeah. I'm trying, short check. I'm really trying. It is piloting. Uh, I'm going to evade successfully, and then positioning. Okay. 34. 34 does it. Ooh, I don't know if that's going to do it. This is 29. Nah, B. Yeah. He's just, as as in keeps like flying towards him and he keeps like swatting him down, but like that's taking a lot of his energy and focus and he's not able to get into position against you this round. I am going to activate my prescient lenses and I'm going to take a plus two as you see that like clock spin up on my eyelid or like on my pupil as I see multiple futures all at once. And I'm going to roll twice, take the better result on this shot. That is presumably going to hit. That is a 34. Uh, yes. Uh, well, Jenny rolled a crit, which means yeah. that she does hit the weapon system. So let's see what arc is affected. Now, I'm also targeting, or is it only if I crit? It's only if you crit. Okay. Well, I did 43 points of damage because you, you boosted the guns, right, Darren? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, 43 with the with the boost. The reason why we got this little like reprieve and the way we kind of evade is like we go into the forest. We're kind of lost from view. I swerve trying to get away. So like he thinks I'm still going straight. We pop out over here. His shot misses and I just like spin by and like rake him across the front with this Gatling. Hell yeah. This sheer cliff face is like following you. It's like racing beside you trying to get in front of you. You have to give me a piloting check, please. I'm going to use the other plus two that I haven't used yet. 32. That succeeds. You are able to pull up on the persistence just in time. You end up going almost like straight vertical along this cliff face. It's constantly trying to like crest in front of you. So you end up doing almost like a loop before it gives way. And the the cliff face just turns to sand and drops down. I'm a better pilot than that cliff. I've always believed that you were better than a cliff. Oh, that round went fast. Okay. Uh, Probably I'm going to just keep giving it to Cody at this point. He probably needs it more than I do or any of the other systems. I'll give it to you. Don't you worry and succeed and divert power to the engines. 
Oh, actually, can I can I change that to shields? Because that feels like a better idea to heal a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I want to do shields. Sorry, Sorry Cody, I, I, I misspoke and I just start pumping some energy into shields because it sucks there right now. That's still giving it to me just in a different way. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling safer. Now it's time to win. What? 15, uh, put those 15 points wherever you would like. Yeah, I did. I did seven to the front. Okay. The okay. Cool. Cool. Sweet. Thanks. Sorry. Now they're both a 15. His power core begins glitching. Hell yeah. Is that where his laser comes out? It's a part of it. Uh, I'm going to keep evading. That's a, yeah. And then I am going to roll position. Uh, 36. 36 gets you into position. He got a 39. Yeah, yeah. He charges forward. You see him thrust out those two big swords, and he's going to try to do like an X slash on you guys. That is a 39. Yeah, I got a twenty-two. Will that will that do it, Dane? That will, in fact, not. Was do that it. to Damn. hit? That was to hit. Yes. <clears throat> Merrick chimes in. We're almost there, Cody. I think you need another shot. And I'm gonna roll to order you do a shoot again. I didn't expect him to come in so close. He's just like spinning his blades, deflecting all your Gatling bullets. Ah, it's so cool. That's a pass. Nice. That takes me an RP, but you get to shoot again. That is a lot better. That is a 32. 32 does hit. Hell yeah. Thanks, Captain. I've always got you, boo. <laughs> it's a 43 damage. Who knew the, the answer to missing the first shot was just shooting again? <laughs> uh, yeah, he deflects all those first bullets. And then as he goes up to make this X, he opens himself up and you just like get that second round of just like eviscerating the front side of him. But he still manages to, as you're like flying towards him, he just hits that big X strike on you. And you are going to take uh, 32 points of damage to your forward arc. Oh, man. No. Oh, that's going to mean we glitch twice. No, glitch once. We glitch once. But, like, we're again one point away. All right, roll a D100. 18. Uh, that is uh, sensors. Oh, we don't need them <laughs> anyway. Uh, science officer actions. As uh, you see Short Track working away, there's a spark, and he's like, Duh! God, what are you doing? Uh, I think he stabbed the science part. Why didn't he stab the magic part? Or the medical bag? <laughs> Is he glitching again with 43 points of damage? No. Jenny, take your shot. Has Jenny attacked yet? I can't remember. Ooh. She got a 19, which means that is going to force his weapons to glitch again. Nice one, Jenny. Cool. Yeah, she does 24 points of damage. He's already glitched, but he's going to glitch again because of the damage this round. Engines. Bad, bad, bad. Are they now malfunctioning? Good. Make that robot fall from the sky. No, this is his first engine. Oh, ah, okay. Um, but you can see that pretty much, like, his whole fucking systems are, like, I think every system right now is fucking glitching. So you could just see, like, sparks and stuff just shooting off him. But you, you look up and you see that the cloud cover is now descending. Hmm. It's getting lower, and it's kind of forcing you to get closer to the ground. As it does, these, like, cave systems begin popping up. The only options you have right now are fly up into the storm, which you know is bad, or enter into one of these, like, there's, like, just a wall of, like, holes, like, caves, and you're not too sure where any of them go. Oh, God. If only our sensors weren't glitching. <laughs> there's four of them. I'll fix it this round, but I feel like we have to make the call now. Can I percept? Uh, sure, yeah. See which ones are good? Do I get a negative from our... Uh, sensors. If you're, yeah, if you're, if you're just trying to look, you're probably not going to see much. But if you're using your sensors, it's going to be a minus two. Okay, that is twenty three. Uh, okay. What I will say with this is, they all seem to be the same in terms of like width and whatever. There's just these windy caverns that it's making on the fly. But I will say that uh, the second and fourth one look a little easier. I'm going to go for number four. It's like. A gun it towards four. Give me a piloting check, please. That is a 36. Uh, you succeed as you are just flying through these tunnels that seem to be making themselves like just mere meters in front of you. Your twitch reflexes are coming into clutch right now because you are making sharp turns and loops and turns and, and sideways and like having to like fly upside down at some points in time. And then they finally open up into this massive chasm. 
A glowing red crystal sits in the center. It's huge. It pulses with energy. And the second you enter into it, there's almost like a burst of energy and it pushes the persistence back almost to a halt. And you realize that you are at the core of Extium. And shortly after, you hear the engines of Riddle as it tackles into the persistence. It grapples it and holds it like it's wrestling it. And the persistence begins spiraling down. As you are able to sort of like get control of the ship again, Riddle is mounted on the front of the ship, looking in at the windshield, its sword drawn up and ready to pierce through into the cockpit. Its talons gripped and dug into the front of the ship, and it says, I've been wanting to do this since I met you. I can't wait to kill you all. And as it rears up and begins to thrust the sword down, it stops. The blade makes a tiny crack, a small pebble-sized chip in the windshield as it halts to a stop. And Riddle says, Oh, how disappointing. As the face disappears and it just slides off the front of the ship and down into the depths. Hello, Space GM Dane here to do the things. Uh, this is going to be quick because I've already recorded this and I'm annoyed that it got borked up and now I have to record it again. First and foremost, I hope you're enjoying this week's episode. Second, uh, we are creeping towards the old finale. Uh, this is the final episode in the Alpha and Omega arc. We're going to do a space between and then it's, I think, going to be like a two part finale. And then we're out of season one, which is Wild, and we are very happy that you are along for the ride. Next on the docket, we are up for two Crit Awards. Uh, we are up for Best Legacy Podcast, and I am up for Best GM in the Paizo category, and we would love your support in voting to win those awards. The process is very, very easy. At least we tried to make it as easy as possible. If you head on over to noquestcast.com and click the Discord link, uh, you'll be brought over to our Discord, and in there, there is a section called Crit Awards. If you click that, there's a guide on what we're nominated for and how to vote for us and a link to the voting. And we've tried to make it as seamless and painless as possible. You can also just head on over to the Crit Awards website and vote from there as well. And we would really, really appreciate the support. If you'd like other ways to support the show, uh, you can head on over to NoQuestCast.com and click the Patreon link or Patreon.com slash NoQuestCast. And you can get all of our bonus content, all of our Patreon content, that includes uh, boss stats, the world primers, the 10-minute rest, which is a 10-minute episode where we talk about the most recent episode that we just recorded and uh, kind of give you a peek behind the GM screen, some behind-the-scenes conversations, uh, the cast reactions. It's a lot of fun. It's a very quick and easy uh, thing to slot into your listening routine. Uh, and it also gives you almost weekly content because we release those on alternating weeks. And another great way to support the show is by heading on over to MistyMountainGaming.com. They're a great company. They're uh, lovely people, and they've got everything anyone could ever need for all of your TTRPG needs. Uh, if you've got a friend that loves TTRPGs and you need to get them a birthday gift, or uh, if you are just a gamer yourself, for me, I love Misty Mountain because they have a set of dice for every character concept you can come up with. If, if you're like me and when you make a new character or you're playing a character, you want your dice to sort of reflect that character's personalities or abilities or powers. And I found that Misty Mountain, no matter what crazy character concept I've come up with, I can find a set of dice that matches that sort of vibe. And that is important to me. So head on over to MistyMountainGaming.com, use our special code NOQUEST10 at checkout, and save yourself 10% off the entire store. Once again, that's NOQUEST10 at MistyMountainGaming.com to save yourself 10% off the entire store. And that's it. That's all I'm doing this time, I think. Uh, I hope I haven't missed anything. We hope you enjoy the rest of the episode, and we will see you in two weeks' time. Art, punk, rebellion. The three ingredients create the perfect setting. What if I told you you can run any game of your choice in this city? You name it. D&D, Monster of the Week, Gumshoe, City of Mist, Kids on Brooms, even Call of Cthulhu. 
Magnolia, City of Marvels, setting of art, punk, and rebellion, is a system agnostic micro setting set in a fantasy world city. A revolution in art is going on in this city, where art takes the central place. A government in which the nobles are the ones who set the laws and control the guards means conservatism in art remains in power. But the arrival of the Purple Dragons, a new punk gang looking to free the art with new modern fashion styles, graffiti art, skateboarding pirouettes, and more, might change it all forever. Coming out June 27th on Kickstarter, go check it out and get a free sample of the setting before you buy. There's nothing holding the Persistence anymore. Riddle, or the Archon, falls lifelessly inert down, and it slows to a halt, sort of like in orbit around this giant red crystal. And you can hear on the surface the storm starting to quell. But then you see floating in front of the crystal is Aerodaxus. His hands outstretched, inches away from touching it, you can see ripples of energy sort of like peeling the skin off of his hands. And then he floats back and looks at you guys, the ship, and bows his head. What, what are you doing? He flickers and appears in the cockpit. And he says, you saw it. You saw what they did to her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we know who did that, and they will not be innocent in all what proceeds after this. But you also saw what they did to her. And he opens his hand, and you see a projection of Kaya, scorched, bark ripped off, its limbs cracked, burning, leaves gone, dead. And then he says, and you've seen what they did to her. And he opens up his palm, and you see the rubble of what once was Euseron. And Aerodaxus looks at you and he says, I've made a terrible mistake. I led my people to their death. I thought saving those that needed saving was a righteous goal. And now I see that those that are meant to die are meant to die. Aerodaxus, I think one of the lessons that can be gleaned from almost every situation, is that saving is the first step, but the second step is teaching. One does not equal one. Just because you save them does not make them fixed. You have to give them that second chance, and you have to hold their hand, put them in a direction. Those who are experienced, who have that knowledge, have to impart it. And your people had it, but unfortunately, due to how you do things, you weren't there to share it. You made that ultimate sacrifice, but you expected unfortunately, people to just understand what you meant. So this time, there will be teachers. There are those of us who have learned from this situation, those of us who are here before, who will take that responsibility and impart it. I will devote myself from this day forward to traveling this system, every system. I will do what your people couldn't. I will go, I will teach, I will guide, and then I will move on. The gifts that your people still have left behind. Let me be the one who tells them the story of the Valai, what that sacrifice was, and how they can use it the way it was meant to be used. Maybe this could have been stopped by an instruction manual, but ignorance begets ignorance. But now we know it took too much. It took far too much. Too many people suffered. But now we know. Please, Aerodaxis, let us put this chapter to a close and move on to the next chapter of this story, which is learning, teaching, and healing. Come with me. Be the voice of your people. Let that be the job of a last lie. Spread your story. Don't let it fade. Even if you kill everyone now, there'll be no one left to know the sacrifice that your people made. We can't learn from this lesson. What can we learn from? So I beg you, Aerodaxis, as I get on my knees for the sake of myself Cody, Durin, everyone here on The Persistence, I know second chances are hard, but please, I think we've proved that we deserve a shot. Aerodaxis takes in your words. He listens to them, and you can tell that he is 
slightly distracted, but he is listening to everything that you say. He stares out at the pulsing heart of Exium, and he says, Your optimism, your hope, it is inspiring, and it is what drove me to this mission. We did teach Merrick. We taught. We gave magic. We gave an escape. We gave technology. Everything they needed to survive, to thrive, we gave them a second chance. Every planet in Kasamal, we gave a second chance. This isn't taking anything. All the time that this system had, every living being is a gift from us, from me. And now that time has expired. They got borrowed time. Everyone here did. Time that they wouldn't have had. They had a second chance. They had a time to close, to say goodbye, to love, to laugh. But I've seen what happens with second chances. Destruction, death, decay, greed. Even those that got so close to getting it right still crumbled. I recognize now Penateris was wrong. This isn't Penateris's reckoning. It is Eridaxus's redemption. And he disappears. Oh, I don't like any of that. Merrick punches the ground at like full force, like just like on his knees, like just holds back and gives it to the base of the ship. What do, what do we do now? I, I don't know. This is a cycle. He's proving his own fucking point. So what? Now we have to go and kill him. This just has not just been a cycle of killing one person, thinking it's over. Someone else. It's just been. <sighs> Father, what is our purpose? Why does this seem futile? Why, why have we done any of this? If it's going to lead back to the same fucking conclusion. Huh? Really? Everything we've given? Maybe we should just go and fly as far as we can fly. All of us together and never come back. It's hard to object to that. Because at this point, I don't know what else we can do. We, we can fight. I know it's... Fight what, Cody? The thousand-headed Hydra that we've been fighting this whole time? Yeah. That now has a million goddamn heads? Yeah. And I think we just have to keep doing it because who else? You've taught me to fight, to keep going, to keep persevering. Like that story of your people, the man who fought the storm with a sword, and eventually he cut it down. I'll bet he probably thought halfway through that that was never going to end and that fighting a storm with a sword was useless. But he got there. He cut it down. And I we can't leave now. You know that. Merrick takes a deep breath. I don't want to fight Eridaxus. I thought he was our friend. But there's no one else. Cody, you're right. We will go and fight the storm. But what's different about us is that our sword is called the Persistence. And we will never give up. Even when we show weakness, like I did now. That's not weakness. That's being real. You taught me that. All right. Let's do this one more time. One more time. Everybody, we need to find Aerodaxis. Uh, Short Jack, get out of the scanner, see if we can find any traces of Valai, energy, anything at all. Jenny, you've seen our story this whole time. If you could think of an obvious place for Aerodaxis to go, let us know. Let's find Azen. Is he just like walking on the planet by himself somewhere? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> the planet calms. You can see the, the heart of Extium still beating and a hole opens above it a chasm miles long that leads up to the surface but before you go you hear echoes voices and it sounds like millions of voices at once all saying the same thing and it says we understand that you are upset that you're angry we were destroyed once too but there is life after destruction Eridaxis will set things right and we can tell that you are good, that you believe in good. There will be a place for you when we reconstruct. You don't need to make this a fight. You just have to make a hard decision. Allow Eridaxis to right his wrongs and be a part of a better tomorrow. One where Exium thrives again. One where greed and war and malice and hate and death do not plague this system. You could be the architects of paradise. You just have to let go. Look, 
I may have told this one before, but my people had paradise, a lush, perfect world of peace. But even that eventually became sand and sun, war and survival. It's gonna keep happening. There's no perfect state unless there's eradication. So all we can do is build a better world, but we will never build a world without those things. So how do we prepare for it, teach for it, train for it, live in the moment, love each other while we can? This whole idea that nothing bad can ever happen again is never going to be it. Perfection doesn't exist. It just fucking doesn't. So maybe we can compromise millions of voices, <laughs> but it, it's no perfection. That's been the whole thing this whole time. You have to fucking compromise. I feel like if we had compromised on day one, we probably wouldn't have done any of this stuff. So Aerodaxis, we're coming to hopefully compromise. The heart grows silent. And then one final message. Good luck. Good luck to you too. You'll still be here when we're done. And if we... If this does not go the way you want, Exium, I promise you we will come and help you heal. I know you've been wrong so many times and it means very little, but we've got nowhere else to go. We can come hang out. We can build a house. <laughs> take it easy. Durham's probably going to w- want to lay low for the rest of his hey, life. Listen, it's it's been a rough time. I'm, I'm game for just some one-on-one. We could all get to know each other. Really work out this relationship we have going yeah. on here. Well, we just talked about second chances with Aerodaxis and... You've done a lot of bad stuff, but we're giving you one here. And Cody angles the ship up. Um, does anyone have an idea where we're going? To, to bed, hopefully. No, well, we got to figure out where Aerodaxis is. Where would Aerodaxis even go at this point? My like, gut says the cube. Maybe. Because that's yeah. where it all began, and that seems to be the kind of journey that we're on. But I'm not 100% on that one. I just, I think what he's going to do is finally make his sacrifice. I think we just yes. need to figure out what that <laughs> yeah. is. Would be Kaya, maybe, the tree and stuff, but... I've got a backup tree, baby. We can fix that one. That one I'm ready for. My tree is going to be so much more fun. It does party lights. It seems a lot nicer. It hasn't called me any rude names. He's spoken a lot of riddles, but his redemption, what would that be? Where did he fail? He never made a sacrifice and kept himself hidden away. I think that's, that's his regret. Where the frig is Mazo? Is he someone that he might punish for this? For, you know, dissecting Penny? We know he can shapeshift. He could easily just take the role of someone. Yeah, but I feel like he's past the point of subtlety. But maybe not. Hmm. Are communications back now that the planet's chill? Yes. Yeah. Um, Short Jack patches through to anybody. <laughs> I think I think Astrid. Astrid knows Astrid. Aerodaxis. Aerodaxis has messed with her before. or Or not, I guess. The people you know who has, like, dealt with Aerodaxis are the Sinonans. He was hiding there for quite a while, and Astrid would probably be yes. So if you want to reach out to Astrid, for sure. You patch through to Astrid, and it takes a while, but she finally answers, and it's not, like, at her desk. She's very obviously in Therum, and she looks bad. She's got a ton of wounds and injuries. Uh, She's got a massive cut on her forehead and blood is like pooling down. Her left eye is shut because of the amount of blood that's running down her face. You can tell it looks like her nose is broken as well. And she is kind of like hunkered down with a, uh, a gun sort of like braced against her. And she just says, what? (sighs) Are you guys okay? Yep. Sort of. Are, are you? Yeah. How are you? I think it's stopped. Yeah, round round two is stopped. We have this one final bout, unfortunately. Look. And she stands up and limps her way to a window uh, that's been shattered out. And she points out into the street. And it's carnage. You can see the one entire district that had been sunk on Therum is just missing. But... Uh, Amongst the rubble and the wreckage and the the bodies, you see people helping each other up and moving rubble and getting people to safety. And you also see a a small group of Ministry of Defense soldiers who are, like, corralled and on stretchers. And 
She says, the people who were silvered, they're free. Whatever you did worked. Oh, let's, let's take that victory. Yeah, we, we... We get it. We stopped Penny, but I think Aerodaxus has turned on us. He's making moves and we don't know where he is. So if you see him... <laughs> Not- Next time you see Aerodax, it's just like, let yeah, us know. If, if he hits you <laughs> up, let <laughs> us know. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't trust him, I think. The Valai, from what I understand and what we know of them, they came from the fold, the edge of the universe, where time and space are being made. That's where they lived. That's where they watched. If he was going to go anywhere, I would imagine it would be home. Can he mess with space and time from there? Because if so, we might have a really big problem. Yeah. All right. I guess. But why didn't Penny just do that? Penny didn't have a corporeal form. Well, Penny was also, like, not herself. True, but I mean... I think maybe if Penny was was whole, they could have. I don't know. Okay. We're going to do that. Astrid says, you can't just... (laughs) You can't just fly into the fold. It's... Why not? Yeah. It is, it's the edge of reality. Yeah, we've done 20 impossible things, I think, in the last hot minute. I understand that, but there's there's science to this. Well, I just fought a planet, so where's your science now? I, I get it. I understand. But you can't take something that exists and bring it out of existence. Not without really, really bad consequences. So before you fly in and unravel yourselves from time and space and history... Take a second. Give me a moment to reach out to some of the scholars here and see if we can devise something that will keep you safe there. Just promise me you won't fly into the edge of the universe without checking in with me again in a moment, okay? All right. Of course. I look at Merrick. I say, of course. Dern just stays quiet. She says, okay, give me like a day to see what I can. Chaos is pretty much the the order of the business right now but i understand that it's going to get a lot worse if we don't deal with this so give me a day get some rest and we'll find a way to get you into the fold as you guys are exiting out you finally crest out of this chasm that holds the beating heart of extium uh you hear a like a as as and lands into the back of the persistence and rejoins you all in the cockpit he looks at everyone and just says What did I miss? Nothing good. No, Aerodaxis is now playing God. But not in a good way either. Well, as someone who was previously controlled by someone who was playing God, I'm happy to help if you'll have me. Of course. I understand that there is distrust. Hey, we're about to go into the fold, so there's a chance we all stop existing. Okay, I don't think I was expecting that, Hmm. but sure, it makes sense. Do you have a plan? Oh, we no. could wing it. Not, not yeah, yes, wing like, not it at all. Astrid's going to make us some uh, fancy science doohickey just so we can go in there or not cease to exist. And then we either punch or befriend Aerodaxus till he stops. That's truly been Man. the two yeah. options this whole time. It's been very okay. tiresome, honestly. It's been a lot. <laughs> we should get t-shirts made that say punch or befriend. And that the only options is what it says on the back. Because <laughs> that's all we do. No neutral. If Aerodaxus is looking to destroy Casimal or pick up where Penny left off. He's going to need an army of his own. Penateris had those silvered. Why would he need an army? He can just rewrite whatever whatever he wants. Just once, though, right? That's not necessarily how the fold works. The, the fold doesn't have control over what is made. It allows you to make what isn't. So what? He's going to sacrifice himself for an army? As in sort of like shrugs, but says it, it might not even require a sacrifice. If he has enough power within the fold, he could just create them out of thin air. He is the last fly officially now. So if that's what we're looking at, the only way to fight an army is with an army. You have friends? Oh, yeah. A couple. Then I think you should call them. <laughs>